Hi, this is Lawrence Sanek at Home Seller Home Buyer Podcast. Today I'm bringing you Home Seller Episode Number Eight: The Importance of Photographs of Your Home and That Photographs of Your Home Matter in Real Estate. When you talk about marketing a home today, you're talking about marketing it to the world. And the only way to market to the world is to have exceptional, and I mean exceptional, photographs. Before the days of the internet and online real estate listings, home buyers' first impression of a home that they were maybe buying was the drive-by. An agent would see a new listing in his real estate book and call or fax the buyer with the address. The home buyer would then go to the address and do a drive-by. And if it was interesting, they would have the agent set up a showing time. Or they may have seen a home in the Sunday paper with a description and called the agent to see it. Either way, curb appeal mattered because it was usually the first glimpse a potential buyer would have of the property. If there are weeds, dead grass, peeling paint, rusty nails, all that type of negative stuff that stood out, the buyer's buyer's impression of the home was tarnished no matter how great it looked inside. That first impression of the outside may have turned the buyer off totally. Curb appeal will always be important, even today. Buyers are busier than ever, and they do not have the time to do the drive-by. Instead, the first impression buyers get are of those photographs in the MLS, which they automatically receive in an email from their agent or pictures that accompany an online listing. With limited time and countless listings to review, buyers will quickly move on if the photos do not reflect well on a property. Today, the home buyer still wants to do a drive-by if possible, if they're in the area. But if they are out of state or out of country, they could ask the agent they're working with to do the drive-by and view the property and take photographs of the property to see what it looks like. The importance of a properly lit high-resolution photos are the only type of pictures that should be used in a home. Like any other sales effort, it is important to put your best foot forward. If an agent takes property photos with a smartphone, this should be a red flag to the seller. Smartphone pictures are fine for informally sending photos back and forth quickly between an agent and a buyer, but they should not be used for the quality photos that are needed from a good camera to be used on the MLS in the pictures that are most important. If you don't have photos of the property yet, don't list the home until you do. With so much information available online these days, you only have a few seconds to grab a potential buyer's attention. If they do an internet search or check the MLS email and your home is listed without pictures, there isn't anything for them to look at buyers will likely move on and probably won't come back. Because of the importance of a good first impression, home sellers and their agents should spend as much time and energy on the photo shoot as they do on creating the curb appeal or staging an open house. This means planning the shoot well in advance, sometimes as much as a week. As a home seller, you know when your home gets the best natural light. So make sure photos are shot during those times. Have the home fully cleaned and in top shape before the shoot. As with an open house, clear out all the children's toys and pets and fully declutter the home. Imagine the photo shoots retailers and catalog companies do to show their product. Would they release a catalog with photos of stained living room furniture or with improper lighting? Of course not. And neither should a home seller. A home is a product for sale just like any other and should be marketed as such. Often buyers have toured your home and after they've toured it, they return to the computers and look at the property online again. This time they can put together the floor plan and understand how the home flows and how each home relates to the next. High quality photos that show the home well will keep them interested, perhaps even encourage them to take another look or make an offer. On the other hand, if you cleaned your home before the open house and got the buyer in the door, but then they go back and look at dark photos, blurry photos, out-of-focus photos, 
with imperfections, you can easily turn them off. If your agent doesn't have a good quality camera and real estate photography experience, consider asking them to hire a professional photographer who does. While it's another expense, consider this. When you put a home on the market, you're competing all against a lot of other properties. If those properties are highlighted with attractive, well-lit photos and yours isn't, you're going to have more trouble getting potential buyers in the door. This could cause your home to sit on the market longer. And what would otherwise have been a fresh property will now eventually become stale. Ask your agent to see the photos they'll be using. Sellers often have some old-fashioned ideas about marketing their home and they don't include photography and that thing called the internet. Home buyers ask for pictures and they want lots of them. They want great photographs that they can look at on their computer screen, tablets, or smartphones. The way buyers look for homes is really changed now that everything is on the internet. Marketing homes on the internet is old news for real estate agents and for home buyers, but home sellers have not caught on yet. Homeowners who purchased their last home in the 80s, 90s, or 2000s remember going to open houses and looking at the newspaper advertisements. For many homeowners, they think the process of selling a home hasn't changed since then. As a result, they may not even be asking their real estate agent the right questions. Instead of asking us how many open houses we are planning to do, they should be asking us if we plan to do exceptional photographs. These same homeowners don't really pay much attention or even notice the poor photographs of their home on the internet. You know, the ones with the dimly lit room, the bright yellow date stamps, across the bottom of the photograph. Technology really has changed the way homes are marketed. Effective marketing happens on multiple websites with photography and words. Each picture is seen by thousands of people instead of the two to ten people who show up at the open house. There isn't anything wrong with having an open house. Many agents use open houses as a way to prospect, and real estate companies like it when agents put out all those open house signs with the real estate company logo on them. It's good for business. Instead of asking us how many open houses we are planning on doing, home sellers should be asking us if we plan to hire a professional photographer or if we, as an agent, can take those exceptional photographs that are required. Open houses are also a great way for agents to represent both the buyer and seller, which means more money for the real estate agent. Homeowners believe the open house is going to sell their house. They don't understand that there is actually a much bigger pool of qualified buyers out there, including people who cannot get to the open houses on Sunday afternoons. Home sellers don't really see us working unless we are holding an open house. Marketing on the internet is still an abstract concept for most home sellers. And it doesn't really seem like the kind of work a seller wants to pay thousands of dollars for. Some home sellers will act impressed with the talk about photography and the kind of visual marketing experience I need to create to get the attention of the home buyer. But if I ask them to choose between digital marketing and having an open house, Many would choose the open house because they understand it, not because it's better. If photography was important to home sellers, they would insist on better pictures. They would ask agents for samples of how they market homes on the internet rather than asking if they will be doing an open house every weekend and paying for print advertising. As an industry, we want to improve the home buying process. We need to start working on the home selling process. We need to tell the home sellers on how today's home buyers will shop for their next home. We need to help them understand that things may have changed since they purchased their home. Superb interior photographs displayed on the internet will get more qualified buyers into a home than an open house. Home sellers need to get up to speed on how the internet has changed the home buying process, even though it is probably easier and less expensive for real estate agents to do an open house. The home seller should evaluate the agent, look at the agent or broker's current listings, and evaluate their property photos. If the pictures are blurry, grainy, crooked, poorly composed, you may be better off choosing another agent. Use compelling shots. 
Do the photos make you want to visit the home? Do they look like they are pulled from a home and garden magazine? Those are the kind of photographs that will appeal to prospective buyers. Pick the right amount. How many photographs does the agent post on the listing? One photo? Way too few. 30 or more? Way too many. The first several photographs in the listing are the most important, and they should be a front shot, main living area, kitchen, master bedroom, master bath, as well as another attractive feature. The agent shouldn't plan on shooting their own pictures unless they have the ability to take exceptional photographs. This is a service the agent is required to offer the seller to be able to present the house in the best possible light. Before the photographs are taken, the home seller should present a list of shots that might be helpful. Perhaps there's a view the seller loves from the patio, which may be what got them to buy that home originally. That's helpful information for the agent to know before they get on site to take those photographs. The home seller should request to see the photographs and give final approval. Ask the agent to see what's going to be posted online and compare them to homes that are similar to yours. If they don't turn out well, ask for a reshoot. Marketing a home today is all about photographs and words. The better the photograph, the better the description, the better your home is going to be marketed and put it in a better light for sale as long as it is priced properly. Any home can have great pictures, great description, but if it's overpriced, it's not going to sell. Thank you for listening to Home Seller Episode 8 about the importance of photographs when selling your home. We are grateful for the time you have taken to listen to this podcast, and we look forward to your input and what you would like to hear about in future podcasts. You can find the show notes at www.homesellerhomebuyer.com, and you can leave your comments, questions, and suggestions there, or you can email us at info, that's I-N-F-O, at homeseller homebuyer.com. Tell your family, friends, and coworkers about Home Seller Home Buyer Podcast. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to listen to the Home Seller Home Buyer Podcast and catch us on the next episode. Thank you for listening and stay informed.